This one's a request from Rathbones96. Spider-Man PS4, duality, responsibility, and doing the right thing. This is a Spider-Man thing, so the views would be decent. I want you to think <laughs> back to the first game you ever finished. Not the first one you ever played, but the one that so enraptured your inattentive child mind to the point that you stuck with it through level after level, mission after mission. I can't remember. Cutscene until finally you face down that final boss. And maybe it took a few hours, maybe even a few days, tens of tries, but you managed to defeat them. And as you watch those credits roll, for the first time you just understood something you didn't before about the true joy that a game could really give you beyond just momentary bits of fun from the beginning or levels you accessed through cheat codes. Mm. No. You'd earned that victory. You'd earned that joy. Being yes. born in 1998, I grew up mainly on the PS2 and the PS1 games I could play on the PS2. I started and stopped games all the way from Siphon Filter and Crash Bandicoot to... I still do that to this day. And, Nightfire, ...and I was terrible at finishing them. Probably because mm. I was spending my time in games like Madden 99 going out of bounds on every play because I thought that was fun, apparently. What can I say? I had simple pleasures. Hey, but we all have fun. Change. We're refined fun, right? The first game... I ever finished the first game that managed to enthrall me so much to the point that I got from the very beginning to the very end without any cheat codes, any help from siblings. I did it all on my own. That game was Spider-Man Two. Hmm. It was for me at the time. This <laughs> I have expected Spider-Man for PS4 to Spider be like, wow, took it that I long. Remember my mind being blown by the fact that you could actually touch the ground. I was enamored. Yeah, you can do that in the I first game. So many times, I have so many fond memories of fighting Mysterio and Rhino and Shocker, chasing after Black Cat across rooftops, listening to perhaps the most iconic song in any video game ever. <laughs> Still mean to this day. Goes in and out of popularity, of course, but it doesn't die. Pizza time. Honestly, <laughs> <honestly laughs> Spider-Man before, I think this is where my adoration really? of the character first began. I watched the Raimi trilogy endlessly after this. I watched both the 90s cartoon and the Spectacular Spider-Man whenever I could catch them on TV. I think the Amazing Spider-Man movies are overhated. Yes, even the second one. I have my problems with the MCU version, but I still enjoy those movies. Oh, Spider-Verse. It's hard to God. fuck up with Spider-Man. Spider-Verse. Not course, impossible, but I hard. I to gobble up the game. Spider-Man 3, Shattered Dimensions, Edge of Time, Web of Shadows. I remember being weirdly excited to play the Amazing Spider-Man game for some reason, but in the end, none of them captured that same simple joy that filled me when I played Spider-Man 2. Mm. Until PS4. Or at least, that was until. I still have yet to play it. I see why people love it. Such titles as Ratchet and Clank and Resistance. He's one of those games where it's like, this is great, you should go play it. Eh, I'm good. And they nailed it. The soaring music of John Paisano shifting and changing around the glorious momentum of swinging through a meticulously crafted Manhattan, as close to the sensation of flying through the air like Spider-Man himself as we have ever come, and it remains such a pure source of adrenaline-fueled joy for me. So much that it topped my list of favorite games in 2018, beating out games like Red Dead Redemption 2. Because the thing came out in 2018. Jeez, that game is five years old. Ugh. Playing Spider-Man 2 on the PS2. Nice side by side footage. Sort of. But that's not what I've come here to talk about, is it? Well, no. There's three plot points to bring up in the and title. Of course, you rest easy, knowing your secret is yeah. safe with me. Dr. Artemis was really well trained in this best, game. Doc. It's all any of us can. Peter? He's sympathetic evil. Even when it hurts like hell. Peter, where are you going? Peter! Peter! What Spider Man PS4 did uh, that Spider Man 2 could never do was pair that simple like paralyzed that relief. thrill of being Spider Man with one of the best Spider-Man stories I've ever seen. A story it is a really good story. Repeat the same Spider-Man tropes that interiors yeah, right. the very concept. Finally, an original story, relatively. ...is based on. With great power comes great responsibility. It tells the story really well. This is a story about people and relationships falling apart, about idealism and pride, about a young man named Peter Parker. Hmm. I don't need to tell you that this bit at the beginning of the game is the perfect representation of Peter Parker's character 
and his priorities. Anyone else who has talked about this game has probably already told you that. Yeah. However, I will tell you that it also serves as a nice introduction to the internal conflict at the core of this particular version of the character. Short versus long-term consequences. Mm -hmm. Peter will often choose to accept long-term consequences over short-term ones. He'll go after Fisk in order to avoid the short-term consequence of his escape, but in doing so, he submits to the long-term consequence of getting kicked out of the yeah, game. Yeah, now the hi and, and the hierarchy is now out. In itself, another active decision to avoid short. -term yeah, because he was the top of a pyramid, so by knocking off Fisk, the entire pyramid's been knocked over, and then there's a bunch of villains for the rest of the game. Keeps criminals from running rampant through the streets. I'm the one who kept order in this city. He's not wrong. You wish you had me back. It kind of does. But Peter forgoes those potential consequences in order to avoid the short-term consequence of letting Fisk get away. And of course, it's the absence of Fisk that ultimately allows for the demons to make their move. Mm. What's interesting here is that no matter what happens or which consequence ends up occurring, yeah, Peter, Peter will blame himself. Yeah. If crime there was no which re in a way it does, there was no way to get out of this where nothing himself. bad happens. If Fisk got away because he let him go or failed to stop him, he will blame himself for whatever wrong Fisk does next. In a situation where neither option lacks a negative consequence, Peter's mindset always sets him up to fail. Because no matter what decision he makes, he will always be responsible for the outcome. It's always mm. So of course he focuses more on the short-term consequences because at least then he can have some semblance that he did the right thing before yeah. he gets back to his apartment and realizes that all his stuff is gone and he not only has to go all across the city searching for it, but he also has to then actually find a place to stay the night. Ultimately, the delay of long-term consequences means that his focus will always be on short-term gratification and better he hurts than someone else in the meantime. But that doesn't mean those long-term consequences don't still gnaw at him when they come to pass. Because for someone like Peter Parker, losing his apartment or his job are pretty light consequences when compared to some of the consequences he has to deal with as Spider-Man. Yeah. Consequences like the death of Miles Morales' father. Mm. Martin Lee took his opportunity after the capture of Fisk to begin his vengeance on Norman Osborn, which led to the City Hall bombing that killed Miles' dad. One way or another, as far as Peter is concerned, this happened as a result of the long-term consequences of him putting away Fisk and the short-term consequences of him failing to stop Lee in time. Mm. He can't even properly console Miles after it happens because as far as he's concerned, this is his fault. Also, if you so think that he looks weird, Peter looks weird in the PS4 version because he played the PS5 one, they changed his face textures a bit to look Peter more like MCU Spider-Man, so that's where it looks different. Standard. He wants to be perfect. He wants to say that I know, like, he's a total you know, idealist with a very few people have the PS5, but he still. He's unable to uphold that. He takes it as a personal failure. I mean, no he rush to guess. Power he's more like Andrew Garfield, honestly. And every time an innocent person dies, he fails to uphold that responsibility. When Lee tries to turn Peter in the middle of the game's second act, he does so by using that guilt against him showing him that as much as he tries to save everyone, i thought mr negative was going to be the main antagonist of the game and he kind of is but for like a, a, a few chapters and as much as peter fights against it tries to tell him that he can't save everyone this remains but mr negative is a relatively new villain every day relatively the conflict between what he could and couldn't do the people he did and didn't save the good he's done and the good he's failed to do but his greatest perceived failure in this game is to one of his closest allies, mentors, and friends. Otto Octavius. It caught it! <laughs> Not intentional. Otto Octavius is a picture of optimism and perseverance. He gets knocked down at every turn as he tries desperately to do the right thing rather than take a bigger paycheck from Oscorp. He wants to make a real difference in the world, do something that's actually good. Because doing good is its own reward. Otto is losing then, control of his body Otto slowly. That's why he's making the armor and missing limbs, yeah. but making them better in the process. Cuz he's going to become paralyzed himself one day, completely paralyzed. Dr. Octopus and with Peter's help, the neural interface to control him. The neural interface that takes the kind Optimus and turns him into a bitter monster of Peter's own design. Or at least that's how Peter sees it. 
the thing you've probably heard already is that to counteract the predictability of Otto becoming a villain, they made Otto into a character you didn't want to see become that villain. Even though and you knew damn well that he was going to. The more impressive aspect of the character is that he manages Ooh. to fool you into believing that there was ever a point where he wasn't the villain. I don't think it's any accident that Otto's origin here is exceedingly similar to his origin from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. It's a good movie. The most good character. Form of the character outside the comics. Mm. He was a fundamentally good man who wanted to make a legitimate difference. But I was so happy to see him right. back in No Way Home. His own he looks like he hasn't aged a day. I don't know what they did to him. To believe that this Otto is the same way. Even more so because everything and everyone seems Some impressive to be makeup, I assume. I hope it wasn't CGI aged down. He wants to believe that this good man only became what he did because of things that were outside his control. But that's simply not the case. Mm. As the game goes on, it becomes more and more apparent that he was planning this from the start. And his talent for manipulation is on full display when you're walking through his secret lair and learning about how he roped all of the supervillains into his plans. Mm. The way he not only utilizes what they desire or need, but also plays to their egos, flatters them, makes it almost seem like his goal is to help them, even when it's obvious that they're just a means to an end. Mm. Otto Octavius is an arrogant genius trying to prove to the world that he matters after a lifetime of being punished and viewed as a failure. A lifetime of watching bad people like Norman Osborn succeed while he was punished for trying to do something positive in the world. And as time goes on, he becomes yeah, more and more your desperate soul sometimes. to achieve his goal. Because he's running out of time. My doctors call it a degenerative neurological disorder. Probably caused by overexposure to toxic chemicals in my reckless youth. Otto Octavius is not Sorry, a is good this, is there anything man, I can do? there's You're some the sympathy you can find in him. The worst part is, it only affects the muscles. The mind continues to work, but it can no longer do. Physically, he's falling apart, hmm. even if his mind has never been sharper. While Norman gets richer and more successful, he's losing everything. The arms are not only his way of getting revenge on Norman, they're his way of helping his body to keep up with his mind. For the first time in my life, I don't feel like a failure. I feel like me. I'd like to feel Otto like that sometimes. Getting terrified of dying a failure, dying unremembered, dying weak and helpless, while the man he thinks never deserved it only gets more and more of the recognition Otto's only dreamed of. But Peter sees none of this. When all the supervillains escape the raft, and he's been nearly killed, when Otto shows up and reveals himself as the mastermind of it all, the very next thing we hear him say is... Dr. Octavius, why? How did I let this happen? How could he let this happen? He blames How himself. How could he let Otto become this? Almost instinctively, he puts all the blame on himself. From the beginning, Otto was a mentor and a friend, perhaps even that often elusive thing for Peter Parker, a father. Otto was everything Peter wants to believe that people are. Inherently kind, giving, and selfless, Peter wants to believe in people. He wants to trust them, and Otto knows that. So he gave Peter the side of himself that wasn't angry and resentful. He gave him the side of himself that wanted to change the world, not the side that just wanted to matter. Because he knew that if he gave Peter one side of himself, he'd never be willing to believe there was another. Because there's one thing that Peter never believed in. Rejecting duality. Ironic, yeah, but it's true. Insomniac's Peter Parker does, in a way, reject the very concept of duality. The idea that anyone can be more than one thing. Said Peter Parker Spider-Man. white perception of the world. You're either a good guy or a bad guy, an ally or a victim, a hero or a villain. Life is that rarely that simple. Peter's character himself. Peter might have these two identities, but really Spider-Man is just an extension of Peter's own ideals and sensibilities. He's Peter's desire to do and be good just in different ways than Peter is able to on his own. At the end of the day, Peter might have two identities, but they're essentially the same identity in two different sets of clothes. Basically, yeah. Literally. Peter Parker is, is Spider-Man. He's a good person. He genuinely wants to help people and make the world a better place in whatever way he can. 
sometimes with an unhealthy disregard for his own well-being. There's not a single part of himself that isn't selfless, whether it's Peter or Spider-Man, and with his general desire to trust others and believe in their inherent good, of course he would assume that everyone around him also has a singular identity. And it's that assumption that often endangers his relationships. Take Mary Jane, for example. When we start the game, they're not even on speaking terms. No, break up. Like a lot of Bad break up. They do happen that. off screen. The reason for their breakup remains unclear for a large chunk of the game until finally, Peter's singular understanding of MJ as a damsel that needs to be saved leads him to unwittingly interrupt her before she can get crucial information about their shared plight. Yeah. You know, this is exactly why we broke up. I thought we broke up so you could focus on your career. We broke up because you wouldn't stop treating me like a baby. Don't do this, some... MJ. Don't do that, MJ. Oh, that's well, you get yourself into trouble MJ. quite a I bit. I have super spider powers, but I'm not made out of glass. Well, I know Peter that. didn't think of MJ as anything more than someone that he needed to protect, and that completely invalidated the very concept that she could ever do anything for herself. Through his mindset of rejecting duality... It's not that I don't think you can't take care of yourself. It's that I want to be there to help to you. Isn't that what I'm supposed to do? Be a guardian? So not only does he reject duality because he isn't able to see it in himself, he also does it as a sort of defense mechanism. Contrary obligated Spider-Man lifting up big so thing. Better understand who is who in his world, who needs to be saved, who can help, and who is the enemy. If those identities start crossing over with one another and shifting over time, then things get complicated, people get Shit. hurt, and he will believe that it's his fault. Mm -hmm. His rejection of duality is a means of self-defense. An attempt to control reality enough to prevent those short-term consequences like MJ getting hurt, regardless of how much that long-term consequence of losing her will hurt when it comes to pass. Yeah, but throughout I, the game, this blame perception the is same consistently thing. challenged. While he's blaming himself for his turn, he's watching Martin Lee, a man he always knew to be kind and giving, turn into the monster that is Mr. Negative, and Mr. Negative mm -hmm. himself and his ability to bring out the negative side of people force him to question the capacity for that duality in literally... He is from the comics, comics, though. He's not something the game MJ made up. Leeds on her own, I only said that because I thought the game made it up. He's getting the damsel in need he always yeah. saw her at. And he sees Miles Morales make up new characters. I don't care. Stricken kid he failed to connect with. Just didn't know he was an actual Spider-Man villain. How to be strong, because he realizes that what he needs more than anything, after everything he's been through, is to be reminded that he can still be strong. <laughs> this all comes to a head when, after fighting off both Electro and Rhino with broken bones, he has to save Aunt May from a fire. MJ helps to get May out, and Miles saves him when he falls. It was the people he thought he needed to save that end up saving, saving him. him yes. Through confronting that rejection of duality, Peter has to recognize the duality in himself. That while he's often strong and capable, he has limits. limits. Spider-Man might be able to fight heavily armored giants and a flying dude with electricity coming out of his arms, but Peter mm. Parker is still human. Just because you have great power doesn't mean that everything is your responsibility. This is all my fault. I'm not this long again. <laughs> you are not alone anymore, Pete. You have to be willing to do what you can and recognize what you can't. Trying to do everything and save everyone, especially all on your own, is impossible. Th that's the Superman conundrum, actually. You just can't do. People that you just can't save. Yeah. The Superman conundrum, too. Wants to save everyone, but he knows he can't, and that breaks him. May is inside. dying from the devil's breath that Norman Osborn yeah. created, and that Otto unleashed. In an effort to make an evil man suffer, Otto caught a kind old woman in the crossfire. Through all this destruction, all this pain, all he's really done is hurt those who were just trying to help. Yeah. And now, Peter has to face him. They both had visions of changing the world, just in different ways. Peter, wanted Peter makes his own super people, suit for this. Otto wanted to destroy the bad. Peter doesn't want to fight him. See, that's him. He doesn't want to hurt Otto, but he has to. The neural He's interface the same tech. made him into this. The neural interface that Peter was instrumental in creating. And the only reason that Otto became this was because their lab was declared a safety hazard and their grant money was taken away by Osborne, which must have planted the seed for revenge in Otto's mind. And all of that only happened because Peter was late for work because he chose to go after Kingpin instead. This is all Peter's fault. Such a disappointment. Parker. You knew? I tried to warn you, Peter. The 
but you didn't listen. You knew. I never understood when the quotation. You're a little kid playing Spider-Man Two. You want to believe that everyone is good at heart, that no one would ever try to hurt you intentionally, that no one would ever take advantage of the fact that you wanted to trust them. Sadly, the people are too like that. Too. It's Peter Parker's belief in the good that Otto still has within him beyond the arms that control him that ultimately saves the city. It's the belief that beyond vanity and ego there is something... Otto in Spider-Man 2 who is genuinely a good man in his heart. ...to help it find its way back sometimes. At the end of that movie, the villain, the bad guy... Saves the day. ...is responsibility for his mistakes and let go of what he wants. Sometimes, to do what's right, we have to be steady and give up the thing we want the most. Even our dreams. And I don't think that's bad, not by a long shot, but what mm. Spider-Man PS4 does is take that idea and expand on it and ask the question, what if Otto refuses to be saved? Yeah. Before the neural interface, before even the loss of his grant, Otto lied to Peter. He knew from the beginning that he was Spider-Man and he lied about it because he knew that it was to his advantage. He helped him create a better suit, knowing that he could make sure it wouldn't help Peter against him. He concocted stories about working on security for the raft. He flattered Peter by constantly reminding him of his intelligence. He stirred pity for himself by telling Peter about his disorder and about Norman's unethical science. He appealed to Peter's desire to change the world for the better. When Otto saw Peter, so he saw a genius mind and a kind meant. heart that wanted to see the good in people. He saw someone he could manipulate into helping him create what he needed to not only face Osborne, but become what he believed he deserved to be. Successful, powerful, worth something. This was Otto the whole time. And in that moment, when Otto revealed all of this through that simple confession that he knew, it unlocks in Peter an anger and a hurt that keeps him fighting on and on until finally Got a second he destroys wind. the neural interface, rendering the arms inoperable. Otto falls into the building they were fighting on, and Peter follows, going after the anti-serum that could save the entire city. Otto, broken and beaten, tries to convince Peter that he doesn't understand. I should have known you'd turn on me, just like all the others. Turn. You turned on me first. Turn. I've worshipped you, your mind, your conscience, wanting to help others, the way you never gave up. That's because men like us have a duty, a responsibility, to use our talents in the service of others. Even if they don't appreciate it, we have to do what's best for those beneath us. And then Peter rejects that. Otto falls back on his one scapegoat. Yes, of course. You're right, Peter. Oh, I see that now. The neural interface affected my mind. But I can fix it. We can fix it together. If you'll help me. It's that same thing from Spider-Man 2. Mm. That wasn't really him. Except the neural his momentary interface. Hubris, but deep down, that good man is still there, no. right? That wasn't Otto, was it? That the neural interface the isn't affecting his brain, and Peter knows the man this. Who wanted to change the world. He's using as a scapegoat. I'll make sure you get the best help. No! If they put me away, they'll take my arms! I'll be trapped in this useless body! Please, Peter. That wasn't me. You said you'd never abandon me. You promised. Remember? The man lying here is weak and in 
shambles, desperate to remind Peter of what he always thought Otto was. He's ashamed of that weakness, terrified of being forgotten and thrown away. This moment is where we see, for the first time in this game, the true Otto Octavius. A man who spent his whole life trying to use his gifts to do what was right, to save the world one problem at a time only to be pushed down and watched from the ground as the world's worst people continued to succeed while he was left behind. And he didn't care who he hurt if it meant making his way back up. Even the one person who really did care about him. There's a moment here where I fully believe that Peter almost decides to give Otto another chance. He He almost decides to believe believe in that man that Otto wants him to believe in, that he wants to believe in. Not the scared, angry, bitter man who betrayed his trust. I want to believe that too. I don't don't blame Peter. The right thing. And of course, you rest easy, knowing your secret is safe with me. You do what you think is best, Doc. I can't take a short-term podcast this time. I need a long-term one. Peter? Even when it hurts like hell. Peter, where are you Long-term going? benefit over short-term one this Peter. time. Sadly, especially no. from themselves, and that's not your fault. You can't take responsibility for someone that refuses to be saved. Sometimes all you can do, the best you can do, is leave them behind. And it might hurt. It probably will hurt. You'll be screaming at yourself to go back. You'll be telling yourself that you're a bad person for walking away. You'll be telling yourself that they are your responsibility. But they aren't. And you have to accept that. You have to be willing to let them go even when you don't want to. Even when they're pleading with you to hold on. Sometimes that's just what's best. Sometimes your only responsibility is to let others take. It's not an easy to do. I've been there. I want to see my nephew. She knew too. You knew? I've known for a while. I never wanted you to worry. I did. And I am so proud of you. And Ben will be too. All the people you saved. I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. You know what home steals this idea without me dying. <laughs> I could have spoiler warning, they actually freaking do it. Save the entire world of one person. I forgot they actually killed on me. It's been a while since I've watched the playthrough of this game. <laughs> then Nurse walks in. Oh, wait, Peter Parker, Spider Man? When you're a little kid playing Spider Man 2, you don't really know just how hard life is going to be. You don't know about all the hard decisions you're going to have to make, all the people that are going to hurt you, all the people that you're going to lose. That joy of finishing a game for the first time ever is the strongest, purest emotion that you've ever felt up to that point. You don't know that there's so much else you're going to have to deal. Yeah. So much of it does not feel good. There's, There's a lot of pain. negative emotion. People shouldn't be who you want them to be, and you're going to have to make decisions that you don't want to have to make. And sometimes, just like in Spider-Man 2, you'll have to be willing to go through pain 
to hurt more than you've ever hurt before to do the right thing because that's what heroes have to do sometimes but those consequences that pain you feel right now is short term even if it doesn't feel like it you have so oh no it isn't to live. So many more the pain always comes back exactly losing what you need someone to you care about if they're not exactly what you want so much more that you can do and create our greatest responsibility is to keep on going to keep on living to keep on creating because even when people hurt you there's always someone else who will help you through you just have to be willing to see them in all that they are and you have to be willing to see all of yourself your limitations and your pains and everything you are able to do it's all there if you look hard enough for many kids today spider-man ps4 will be the first game they ever finish Good for them. And they'll feel that pure joy of getting through an entire game all on their own, earning that success, and it will be the strongest, greatest feeling they've ever known. Hmm. And I know they'll go through the rest of it too, but maybe, just maybe, they'll come back to this game and they'll see what I see. A story of a man who wants nothing more than to do the right thing with the power he has, and sometimes the right thing doesn't always look like what you expect it to. Uh, sometimes the right thing hurts but that hurt won't last forever because if you look hard enough that joy is still there I believe they get back together at the end of the game I don't remember why I never played Spider-Man PS4 I just watched a playthrough of it on a commentary channel I watched so that's why some of the details aren't, are you know, it was like almost, it was like a year or two ago, so, you know. I don't remember all the details and all the stuff that happened to it. Mm. Or in it, rather. Yeah. Life is hard, what a twist, I know. Yeah. I don't, it's not that I don't understand what Spider-Man's going through, I do. You want to see good in humanity, but every every single day it just seems like, man, you know what? Fuck humanity, you know? Uh, I don't know. I just want to help people, even those who probably don't deserve it. I don't know. But I do remember one thing. Rathbone did send me a DM in Patreon that he wanted me to read. Um... It's the reason why he wanted me to react to this video in the first place. It's because it's a lesson and a cautionary tale for me. To not take responsibility for people who don't want my help. To see that the bad things people have done aren't my fault, even though I was involved. And that sometimes, only sometimes, the best thing you can do to help someone you believe in, even to be a friend, is to leave them behind. It's a sad truth to it that it hurts a lot to just take someone and just, you know, you perceive them in a f as a friend and then you just have to leave them behind. It never helps to leave a friend behind. I mean, I've done that probably to too many of my friends in real life. For no good reason either, just, uh, I don't know. I don't know why I do the things that I do. Well, I do, but I don't know. I see where you're coming from, Rats, in that it isn't easy to leave a friend behind and not take responsibility for actions that are entirely your, not your fault. I've taken responsibility for actions that aren't my fault before, and it's hard to not look at every problem that's ever happened as your own fault. I got into a car accident, and it's entirely my own fault, and I know that. But at the same time, it was also an accident. That's why they call it an accident. It's random chance, but it's also my fault. I hit another guy. Uh, no one was hurt. Just my car is in shock now. Hopefully not told. Again, no one was hurt. Just the car is badly damaged. Hmm. Hopefully they can fix it, though. But, yeah. Uh, no one was hurt, and that's the important part. Even though, at the time, I 
Well, this is off topic, so it doesn't really matter. The point is that, yeah, it's hard to not take responsibility for people like that. I, I want to take responsibility for too many of my own actions. It's good that I take responsibility for my own actions, but then I take responsibility, responsibility for things that aren't my fault. And I somehow make it my let it seem like it is my fault. So I don't know. Just I don't know. I guess I guess I just leave more people behind. <laughs> no, I don't have many people. I just he makes one thing true though. <laughs> you have no idea how hard life's going to be. No, no, I don't, and I still don't. Still a disappointment in my own eyes. But I want to get better. I have to get better. There's no other choice. I gotta improve. Not for myself, and for others. Because I'm all they have. I don't really have an outro for this, so... Insert wacky outro here, I guess.